All right, you are now entering spoiler territory. This is your final warning. Those hoping to avoid uh, anything being spoiled, you may want to stop the video now if you haven't already. So the first one is a fairly light spoiler, and it's that of the uh, of the free novels. Uh, this is probably the first one that has something close to a happy ending. Or to put it another way, an ending that wasn't insanely depressing in some way. It's still pretty melancholy, and the addendum is, in its own right, kind of devastating. Uh, without necessarily meaning to be, but by and large, it does seem like things kind of work out for the best. It does seem pretty early on that Gerge is destined to win all of his games. The writing manages to keep the illusion that he's at risk of losing... But inevitably there's something that draws him back from the brink at the last minute in almost every instance. I think the most interesting switch is near the end when Goge is told that officially he can't be allowed to win. That a fake news story will be concocted to claim he lost at the first hurdle during the final leg of the tournament. That he goes through with this uh, that he goes through with this too does a pretty good job of making you wonder just how all of this is actually going to end. Surely the prize is for Gerge to play Emperor Nikasar, uh, beat him, and thus overthrow the Empire. But if no one will ever know what happened, why would any of that matter? But of course, it matters to Gerge as uh, a game player because he cares a lot more about just enjoying the game and taking it as far as it will get. Of course, that weird situation creates a pretty amazing payoff, actually, with uh, Goge playing Nikasar anyway, um, even though the public will never know that was the case. Um, and what amounts to quite possibly the greatest game of his life, and never realizing at the time that while he's merely playing a game, Nikasar himself is playing for the future of his empire. I think that revelation is handled really well. Um, Goge is an unwitting pawn, and Nikasar, being one of the eight individuals that actually know the truth about the size and capabilities of the culture, uh, knows that his empire is screwed either way. All he can do is hope to beat Goge and thus earn himself a temporary reprieve. Regardless, the culture will eventually come to dismantle the empire. All he can really do is choose the time frame. And that's always assuming he actually wins, which, of course, he doesn't. That's one of the things that makes the culture interesting. So far, there's no force that can really stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with them. Their opponents are outmatched in almost every way, and really it's only the culture's benevolence that prevents them from just rushing into any kind of action. In spite of this, the novels do a really good job of making you forget just how powerful the culture is, only to remind you of it devastatingly at the end. The way that Gerge describes the culture's endgame during the match against Nikasar is a particularly thought-provoking moment, uh, the whole idea seemingly being that the Empire would only end up smashing itself against the culture until eventually, like the barbarians invading ancient Rome, it ends up being integrated all the same. The outcome is an inevitability because the culture represents everything that the citizens of the Empire secretly desire. But, of course, I can't finish this video without talking about that final twist. The one that left me at first thinking, Oh, that's that's kind of sweet. And then, uh, after realizing what I'd read, Wait, what? Of course, I'm talking about the revelation that Flair Imsaho, the seemingly innocent library drone, was in fact Morin Scale all along. Or that Morin Scale was Flair. You get the point. The implications of this are huge and terrifying. Goge already suspects uh, only a chapter or so back that his whole life might have been one big manipulation to get him to this point, something that Flair Imsaho does in fact deny, but you have to wonder. Anyway, it came as quite a surprise, uh, but I liked it. I for one welcome our future artificial overlords.